Guy Cecil is one of the party's biggest thinkers in terms of Democratic strategy, in terms of what Democrats should be doing to counter Republican electoral machinations. And now he is leaving that job. He has announced that he is leaving Priorities USA at the end of this month after eight years in that landmark, very important job, which made me want to grab him tonight for something I hope I can sneak in as a kind of exit interview without letting him know that's what I'm doing. Uh, as he joins us here now on set for his, his first TV interview since the announcement. Mr. Cecil, it's nice to see you. Thanks Thank for you. being here. Thank you. After all that, I maybe should stay. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, here's the thing. You're not a household name in every household, but for political junkies and people who know how the Democratic Party works, you're a big deal. Um, so first of all, I have to ask you, are you leaving for some intriguing reason? Is there something terribly wrong? No. Okay. You're Nothing wrong. You're leaving because you want to do something different. With yeah. You. Well, I never imagined in 2015 that uh, I would be here eight years later. At the time, we were a traditional super PAC. We ran ads and we existed every four years to, to do that. And after 16, we realized this is not the way uh, we win, that Republicans invest in the long term. They invest in the Federalist Societies. They invest in institutions that aren't just about one issue or about one candidate, but about making long-term ideological change. And so we thought, hey, we have this opportunity, we have this vehicle, let's identify a couple of the structural gaps we see now and let us help the, the Democratic Party and the progressive left fill some of those gaps. And we're doing that. And uh, we have had the same leadership team now for six years. Um, I get to come on shows and talk about our great work. But the reality is we have a team led by our executive director, Danielle Butterfield, who they're going to continue doing this work. How do we close the digital divide between the left and the right? How do we counter algorithms that reward a hatred? and right-wing ideology. How do we make sure we're fighting not just against voter suppression through litigation, but voter suppression through misinformation? All of those things are going to continue. But I also think organizations benefit from change. They benefit from new leadership and fresh thinking. And I think it's also important for leaders of those organizations every once in a while to take a step back, to remove themselves from the minute-by-minute -minute work, and to ask themselves, what am I now called to do? And for me, knowing the organization was going to be in good shape, having a lot of trust in our leadership, I thought now was the right time to take a step back and to take another look at what's happening in our country and how I can best uh, serve. So at this inflection point that you're making for all those reasons, which I, 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 I trust you in terms of explaining <laughs> those things, so I'm not looking for further intrigue. But at this inflection point, where do you feel like the Democratic Party has ground that it can reasonably make up? Not just places where the Democratic Party is behind, but places where the Democratic Party can do it, can catch up to the Republicans on some of these sort of structural long-term projects that, for example, the Federalist Society and other groups on the right have had an advantage. Yeah. Well, I think that's a great place to start, right? They are now out in the open about what their intentions are. There are billions Federal of, society. yeah, there are, and their larger cohort of leaders, right? There, there's over $1.4 billion being invested in essentially creating federalist societies that aren't just focused on the courts, but are focused on Silicon Valley, are focused on education, are focused on technology. We are not prepared to combat that. And we're not prepared to go on the offensive because so much of our infrastructure is based on an issue or a candidate. Climate's my number one issue. Criminal justice is my number one issue. I, I liked Barack Obama, but I wasn't sure about Hillary Clinton. Not enough of our focus is on how do we make sure that we are laying the ideological ground through all of the various levers, Silicon Valley, entertainment, education, to win. But the second, I think, is more of an internal look at how we communicate. Look, our party is diverse and we're unwieldy. Uh, but part of that comes because we are much more diverse than the Republican Party. There are more backgrounds. There are, there are a lot of issues that we care passionately about. And one of my concerns is that we have fetishized the use of data and analytics. Hmm. We think that there is a magic word or issue. And we create caricatures out of our voters. And what I think that does is make it more difficult for us to communicate across the diversity of our party. Black voters care about criminal justice reform, no doubt. They also care about good paying jobs, health care and education in the same way that Latino families and Asian families and gay families and white families do. But we're not communicating in that way. We are turning our voters into a confederacy of caricatures instead of presenting a broader image about what we want the country to be.
The other thing that the structural the, the structural approach that you're describing on the right, though, the other thing they've done is the sort of personnel as policy approach, yes. which is to make sure that in every influential institution and in every feeder institution that leads to those institutions, you've got ideologically committed people who, yes. over the course of their entire career, are going to be have, have set a set a bead on achieving the ideological goals of the movement. Yep. The, 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 the right thinks the left does that. The left does not do that. Um, and that sort of work is the sort of thing that you have to plan literally a generation ahead for. Yes. I, I think there's two things that are, that are really important. Number one, there's a mythology that we're the party of big government. Republicans are the party of small, limited government. That, that is actually not true. Re Republicans are the party of limited government when it comes to helping the middle class preserving you know, our ability to take care of the poor, making sure that Social Security is in place. And in all of those instances, they want a very limited small government. But they want a large activist government when it comes to uh, litigating my marriage to my husband, controlling the uterus of American women, uh, protecting the right of domestic abusers to have access to guns. Um, I, I feel like we need to change the narrative a bit on how we view the Republican Party. The entire evangelical movement, I, I used to be a, a Baptist minister before I got into politics. The entire evangelical conservative movement sold their soul for one issue. And they apologized for Donald Trump for six years and continue to do so because they had their eye on the long-term ball, which was destroying Roe v. Wade, nationalizing a ban on abortion. We need to think more long-term about how we are going to engage at every level of the ballot and across all of these different spheres of influence because the reality is m most Americans agree with us on most issues. So we have to ask ourselves, whose fault is it that we're not effectively communicating those things? And I, I don't want to overstate the problem. We have a Democratic president. We have a Democratic Senate. It's easy for, Dem you know, our love language is anxiety in the Democratic <laughs> Party. Um, but I do think it's, a, it's important for us just to take a step back and say, OK, what, what can we do better? Because we really are trying to make our country fairer and more prosperous and more just. And now our job is to do the hard work to make that to make that happen. Guy Cecil, who for the last eight years was chairman of Priorities USA, who has done way more than you think to shape what you have ever heard from any Democratic Party or cause. Uh, Guy, good luck to you. Thank Thanks you. For being here I appreciate tonight. it. Appreciate Thank it. you.